So we have properties of exponents. And what we're going to do is we're going to come up with the analogous properties of logarithms. A what? Analogous. Analogous. Which, like an analogy from oh. English class. Um, I don't listen in English class. Huh. I zone out. Oh, and then just write the essays. What's the answer to this problem? X, 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 X plus N. N. Okay. So it's x to the m plus n. I don't like this. And um, actually, I'm putting an x down here. I, I'm, I'm actually going to change this one right here. I'm going to change these from x's to b's because we always use this as the base of the logarithm. What are you doing? What I'm doing is, look at this. I have a base to a power times a base to a power equals a base to the sum of the powers. Mm -hmm. Remember that logarithms are just exponents, right? Yes. This can be rewritten as the log of base b of m plus the log of base b of n. A product of exponents, things with exponents, is equal to the sum of the exponents. A product of a logarithm is equal to the sum of the logarithms, because logarithms are just exponents. Does everybody understand that? Logarithms are just exponents. What would I do here? B minus m to the n. So it would be b to the what? m minus n. m minus n. If I have a quotient of exponents, I subtract the denominator from the numerator. Then uh, you're dividing. So here, I had a multiplication problem, and I ended up adding. Here, I have a multiplication problem, I end up adding. Here I have a division problem, I end up subtracting. Here I have a division problem, what am I going to do? Subtract. Subtract. If I have a power raised to a power, what do I do with them? Multiply. I multiply them. This one's kind of neat. The way I'm going to do the multiplication is I'm not going to put an n right here because that would turn it into this top one. I'm going to take this n and I'm going to bring it out in front. Isn't that multiplying the answer of log base b of m times the number n? Mm -hmm. And aren't I just multiplying my exponent by the number n? Mm -hmm. This is an exponent that I'm multiplying by the number n. Those are our three primary properties of logarithms. What's the line for? I'm just showing you that this is an exponent. Oh, OK. And here, I had an exponent that was multiplied by the number n. Mm -hmm. And over here, I have that same exponent multiplied by the number n. Okay. So what it's telling you is if you have a logarithm where this number right here is raised to a power, you can just pull that power out in front. <sighs> or alternatively, you can take a power that's out in front, and you can turn it and put it up top. So it's a way for us to simplify logarithms to make them so that I can use them a lot E more easily. So what I'd like you to do is open your books to page 259. And I would like you to do problems 1 through 4 on the bottom, guided practice 1 through 4 on the bottom of page 259. For those of you that are skipping today, I will pause the video and write the problems up while they are working on them. Okay, 
So what I need to do is they told me what log base 6 of 5 is and what log base 6 of 8 is. What I have to do is rewrite each of these problems so they just have 5s, 8s, or 5s to a powers, or 8s to a powers, or a combination of them. Okay, That way I can use these properties over here with these numbers and come up with my answer. Remember last week when I told you in the back of my math book with just tables of logarithms? That's the kind of stuff we had to do these types of problems. Okay? Well, log base 6 of 5, eights, well, it's a fraction. So it's the log base 6 of 5 minus the log base 6 of 8. Mm -hmm. Equals the log base 6 of 5 minus the log base 6 of 8. Log base 6 of 5 is 0 0.898 minus 1.161. And that's approximately what, Jordan? Um, negative. 0.2046. No, 2.47. 2.47. Give me three decimal points. Oh, three. Um, There's 0.204. It's going to be 0.205. There should be exact. Wait. 0.898 minus this is going to give you an exact number. I put no. the actual log in there. No, you can't. You don't have a capability of doing that in it's that calculator. Negative point two six. Two six three. You cannot do log bases other than ten and e in that ca in those calculators. Do you guys understand that? This is the only way to do log base sixes of things that are not perfect squares of sixes or powers of sixes. So how can I rewrite the second problem so it just has fives and eights in it? Five times eight. This is equal to the log base six of five times eight. Well, using my property of logarithms, the five times the eight, I'm going to rewrite it as log base six of five plus the log base six of eight. This is exact. Now, I'm going to put approximately, because I'm putting numbers that are approximates. Log base 6 of 5 is 0 0.898 plus 1.161. And what is that in our calculator? 2.059. 2.059. Do not put equal signs when you're using approximate numbers, please. Any questions on part 2? Part 3. How can I rewrite 64 as things with 8s in it? 8 times 8 or 8 squared. Eight or eight squared. You're going to get the same answer either way. I'm going to do it as 8 squared. That way you can put the 2 around. So it's the log base 6 of 8 squared. Using this property, I'm going to put the 2 in front. Equals 2 times the log base 6 of 8, which is approximately 2 times 1.161, which would 2 be 3.322. 3 2. Now notice, if you would have done it the other way, you would have had 1.161 plus 1.161, and you still would have had the same answer. So that one you could have done two ways. This next one you can do two ways, but one you're going to have to write a sum of three things. The other way is just write a power rule. 5 to the what is 125? Uh, 5 to the third. So this is equal to log base 6 of 5 cubed, which is equal to, bring the 3 out in front, 3 log base 6 of 5, which is approximately 3 times 0 0.898. Two point six nine four. Any questions on that group? <coughs> Anybody? So we're able to take logarithms and expand them. OK? 
okay, um, into what they are. If you, they don't give you values, for example, if they just said to expand this logarithm, you would do this step. If they say expand this logarithm, you would do this step and then this step. Okay? You know, um, so you basically what you want to do is don't do any extra work that you don't have to do. You can go the opposite direction. If I was given this, you should be able to go backwards to this group. We're going to do one of those in a minute. And the next thing I want to talk about is how can I do this using my calculator? Would you like to be able to use the calculator? Mm -hmm. But you don't have a log base 6 button, do you? Mm -hmm. Okay. So these properties are going to go away because they should be engraved in your head. Not literally engraved in your head. We don't have the magic pins like Hogwarts does. <laughs> Hogwarts doesn't. Oh yeah, they do. You're right. Thou shalt not. Tell, I shall not tell a lie. It starts to cut into your skin. That was Umbridge, and she. Yeah, used she to was at Hogwarts. Bye. She. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. She uh, took over. Yes, she was. She took over the entire school. She was a menace. She was. Why? Still at Hogwarts. They're nerding out. <laughs> I, uh, this should be a fun video for them to watch. She was fired. Yeah, for obvious reasons. Yes, that's a C. Okay. Loving that. What this says is that the log oh, base C God. of A, I'm going to write out some examples, is equal to the log base B of A over the log base B of C. And you're going, how the heck does that make these problems easier? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, sure. RC is going to be one of two things. Actually, our, C, our B is going to be one of two things. It's either going to be a 10 or it's going to be an E. Because you only have two buttons on your calculators to do log bases of, correct? Mm -hmm. You have the log, which is log base 10, and you have the natural log, which is the log base E. So what this is telling me is that the log base C of A is equal to the natural log of A over the natural log of C. My recommendation is that you always use the change of base formulas with natural logs because any class beyond this, the primary reason for you to do it is you're going to be using natural logarithms somewhere further in the problem. Other thing you can do is write this as the log base 10 of A over the log base 10 of C. But again, that is the primary way I would do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply it to this problem right here, where the A part is the big number up here. The C is what the old base was. So this is equal to the natural log of 5 eighths over the natural log of 6. Please put that into your calculator. And give me to three decimal points. Negative point what? Negative point one one. Is that what we had last time? What did we have for problem one? Which one? Problem one that I just did right here. What was oh. the answer? Negative point two six three. So I need to see if you guys put oh, it in. I'm Okay. So you goof something up. You probably did not put the closing parentheses here. Oh, I put six. Okay. Negative point two six two. Yeah. To three decimal points. It's off. By, it's off in the last decimal point. Okay. So now you know. Now you know how to use your calculator to come up with ones that aren't logs and natural logs. So what problem would I put in the calculator for number two here? Of? Of 5 times 8. No, it's 
Let's do it the easy way. That keeps you from having to do that 5 times 8 thing. Just put the natural log of 40 divided by the natural log of 6. Point oh five nine. What did we have before? Uh, okay. Works. How about this one? How about I write this one? Uh, natural log of sixty four. I can't put equals, gotta put approximate. So natural log of sixty four divided by the natural log of six. Two point three two one. Two. Actually, I have three, two, one. And what did we have before? Two, two. So again, they only gave you a three-digit approximation before. Your calculator has the full table of values in it. That's why it's getting us slightly off in that third decimal point. Does anybody have any questions on changing the bases? What I'd like you to do is on page 260, in the middle of the page, is problems five and six. And then on 261, problems seven through ten. I would like you to write those down and do them while I erase the board and set up to do the work. Problem five. Here's the first thing I want you to realize about problem five. It starts off as a multiplication problem. It is three times x to the fourth. So the first thing I have to do is I have to expand it using the multiplication rule. And multiplication of exponents means we do what with them? Add them. Add them. So same thing with logarithms. So this would be the log base 10 of 3 plus the log base 10 of x to the fourth. And now I have something to a power in a logarithm. So I can, can bring that power down in front and multiply by it. So the final answer would be the log base 3 I mean, the log base 10 of 3, or the common log of 3, plus 4 times the common log of x. Does that help? Yeah. Now we're going to go work backwards. We're going to work from left to right using our normal order of operations. Addition and subtraction happen from left to right, correct? Yes. So the first thing we're going to do is those two things. Well, let's think about this first. Isn't this an exponent? I have to bring this up to there first. That'll be my first step. Okay? Because it's an exponent inside my group of parentheses. So this is the natural log of 4 plus the natural log of 3 cubed minus the natural log of 12. What's 3 cubed? 27. So this is the natural log of 4 plus the natural log of 27 minus the natural log of 12. Adding exponents comes from what type of problem? Start with the letter M. Multiplication. Multiplication problem. So if I'm adding logarithms, what I need to do is I need to multiply them together. What is 4 times 27 without a calculator? Uh, what's 4 times 25? Uh, uh, what's 4 times 2? What's 100 plus 8? 108. Any questions on that step? No. A subtraction problem dealing with exponents comes from what type of problem? Division. A division problem. Twelve goes into 108 how many times? And that would be the answer. That is the exact answer. And if they wanted you to approximate it, then you would put that into the calculator. On a test, if I ask for an exact answer and an approximate answer, that would be your exact answer that you would box in. Then you would put the natural log of 9 in and give me the approximate answer. Why 
You annoy me, Mr. Taylor. Yes. Because I said natural <laughs> logarithm, and you said that's not correct. Is that yeah. No, no, no. It's because I treat I treated this like. Um, I can just. Like I, I do, but using my properties of logarithms, I combine them. That's what condensing means. That three goes up here. Yeah. And cubed is 27. Adding logarithms means it turns into a multiplication problem, which is the natural log of 4 times 27, which is 108. Subtracting logarithms is the division problem, 108 over 12. I can't just write 3 natural log of 7 minus natural log of 12 or write 3 natural log of negative 7 or something like that. No, you can't combine things like that. You actually have to use properties. These are exponents. Logarithms are exponents. So the way I remember my properties of logarithms is I don't remember them as properties of logarithms. I remember them as properties of exponents. Notice I said, when I add exponents together, what does it come from? It comes from multiplying them together. That's why I did the multiplication problem. Okay? Any question on that group? Oh, we have the other step to do. Um, I guess I'm not even going to bother to have the correct answers, the, the final approximate answers, on a test. Again, if I ask you for the exact answer as a natural logarithm or a common logarithm, what would the natural log answer be here? Okay, natural log of 8 over the natural log of 5. How about this one? Natural log of 14 over the natural log of 8. Okay. Next one? And the rest of this is just sticking these into the calculator. The hard part on the calculator is making sure you close the parentheses before you hit the division symbol. And make, yeah, make sure you write approximates because once you stick them in the calculator, they are no longer equals. Pages 262 to, oh wow, 264, problems 1, 2, 10 to 12, 21 to 26, Thirty-one, thirty-two. Thirty-seven to forty. David's favorite problems. Laughing? No. Problem. Co condensing them. Uh, <laughs> Forty-three. Forty-four. Forty-nine to fifty-four. Some of these are just sticking them into the calculator, so they're really quick. That's why you're getting a whole bunch of these for some of them. That's you recording. won't believe us. We have to pick a certain number. Yeah, that's recording. What's recording? Yeah, he doesn't have to show that yet. He, Cross probably won't even look at that. Exactly. And 69 to 73. And I will tell you that on anything to do with sound, L sub I is equal to 10 log of I over I initial. This is on page 261, example 5. It shows you how to use um, logarithms to deal with decibels. So some of your story problems you're dealing with decibels. That's the equation you're going to use. It's from example number 5 in the book. Wait, is that I over, over I? Yeah, that's an I, where I... For a sound intensity i in watts per meter squared, the loudness is L sub i, where i sub zero is the intensity of a barely audible sound. So this is telling us i sub zero is equal to 10 to the minus 12 watts per meters per second. Um, watts
watts per square meter, watts per meter squared. So you're going to substitute in for, they're either going to give you the new loudness and ask you what the initial one was, or they're going to ask you, they're going to tell you what this loudness is. So you're going to, you're going to basically just putting in two out of the three numbers there. And they work through an example in the book. And remember, logarithms without a number are base 10 logarithms, which means 10 to the. Remember that they mean 10 to the. So you're going to get things that are usually multiples. Uh, you know, things you can put in the calculator, things like that with the logarithms. So have fun. You'll have a quiz on logarithms. Since we have two skippers only, oh, it will be on Wednesday. That'll give them tomorrow to make sure they watch and catch up. But if you look on the bottom of page 265, that's what your quiz is going to be similar to on Wednesday. Normally, I would have held this tomorrow. The quiz would have been tomorrow.